God bless you guys. This is Sean here from Faith Brings Change. I just want to come on here and I want to talk to you guys uh, briefly. Uh, I was laying in my bed. I was going to go to sleep. I just decided to make a video because I'm doing some research, guys. I think you will appreciate some of the stuff I'm going to show you. Uh, so I want to talk about the mark of the beast. We know in the book of Revelation, guys, and we know in the last days and, and we're about there that the, this world government is going to be rising up out of that sea of nations. And out of that is going to come that second beast who's going to require a mark to be taken of some kind in the right hand or the forehead. You won't be able to buy or sell unless you have this mark. People who don't take this are going to be put to death. Now, there are some reasons or questions as to what this is and everybody has their own opinion but i'm going to tell you some of the stuff what the lord revealed to me guys because i listened to a video that that prophet did basically that false prophet i think this is a guy yuval noah harari i think this is a false prophet because i saw this guy twice in my dream and the second time close up and it looked exactly like him with a ball-headed guy with glasses he's even born um, I was born one day before his 11th birthday, 111. And, you know, this guy is going to be, uh, Jesus told me in the dream something in him is going to die. But he told me they're going to be taking away particles, like from your brain. Something about this mark is going to take away particles. And he was telling me some stuff. I was getting some prophetic words and knowledge. One of the words I received was the fact that we're, one of the words I received is that basically this, this mark you're going to take, if you think a thought about, let's say, I'm going to tell a person to repent of an action or stop doing something bad to somebody else. If you do that, that is a infringing, that's a thought that is infringing on the freedom of the common people. Like they say, for instance, if you're against homosexuality you can't rebuke a person because you're trying to uh infringe on their freedom there's going to be a firing 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 mechanism in that chip to where it'll send off signals in your brain your brain will hurt when you think that and when, remember this there's going to be a digital currency also and they can subtract currencies from your bank account they can subtract whatever it is if you do that just for penalty and that firing mechanism and an mk ultra they would do this and the same thing with uh when a person was in high level occultism and they tried to get out of it or think a thought of getting out of it they were so deep like this high level freemasonry not just when you start out but like 33rd degree or different things they would hear horrible mechanisms uh, I, I believe it was a. Uh, I don't know if it was bill schneblin is the na name but uh whoever it was i listened to it was like firing mechanism it's like your brain is going to explode like your brain is being attacked you can't think to get out of it or call for help to jesus or something if you're trying to leave the game and so it's ex you can call to jesus but they didn't know how to people that are in darkness don't know how they just start trying to go to church or whatever but they would stop you from doing that it'd be like your brain is attacked well this thing taking the mark is like that guys you won't be able to do whatever you want once you take that mark and so this is why some people appear to have total freedom because they already have systems in place where they don't care about sin. They can just live it up and that firing mechanism won't go off. So they appear to have all their freedom, but let them try to do something good or whatever. That firing mechanism will prevent it because it's infringing on the freedom of other people to try to tell someone not to do something. Because these demons are going to take advantage of this chip, guys. And once they do it, they're going to want all evil promoted, including pedophilia. So if somebody says homosexuality is okay, for instance, and lying is okay and cheating, but they're against pedophilia and they try to stop it, that firing mechanism is going to go off because the devil wants to spread all sin on the earth. And so it'll go off and you'll have things deducted from your bank account. And he said it's going to be a brownie point system is what I was hearing. There's gonna be some kind of brownie point system. So if you do evil works, you can get more currencies on. But if you try to do some kind of good work, you're gonna get your uh, currencies, uh, some of them taken. 
or, or things you make, you know, brownie points. Somebody, first off, I want to say that Sodom and Gomorrah, they were, they wouldn't even let them feed the poor. They would severely penalize them if they did any good work. Well, it's going to be the same way, guys. This false prophet is a, a sodomite. And, uh, yeah, he's a sodomite. And some, some guy was doing street preaching and he was saying, like, you know, you're doing works of inequity. And what are you going to be able to say in your resume on heaven when you stand before God? I'm an excellent masturbator. I'm a really good liar. You know, um, I do really well in the field of uh, drunkenness. You know, just getting drunk and, and living it up. I'm, I'm really good at that. But see, in this brownie point system, the devil wants to spread all manner of evil on the earth. There to be no good, just to tear up everything. It's the last time after he gets people to take the mark before he goes into the bottomless pit. So any good work on the earth is going to be forbidden. And I saw how this false prophet felt betrayed by the system that he had joined. He was told he could have his freedoms because he's a homosexual and things. And, and, and told others they can have that if they take the chip. But apparently the chip or things must have not been working right because I saw the false prophet just tossed out like a uh, like this dark side character representing the beast just tossed him out by, like by his hand and he went like a vapor down, you know. And I asked, what's it going to sound like? What's he going to do when he finds out he's going to be in the lake of fire? Because obviously he's deceived. And I heard, what? never and he was like screaming never and he was crying <laughs> you know he was crying super hard but you could hear the evil but he was crying like a baby but it makes you think of how fragile these people are it's nothing in god's hands you know we see the boogeyman but the devil or, or god just sees a person you know they had a choice but uh whatever doesn't work so let's say he's told about freedom give people their freedoms but they don't specify what freedoms are guys so the devil wants to be able to promote all evil so maybe his boyfriend or his husband or whatever in this new system of freedom another person who's a sodomite might want his husband break in there and do that and rape and they're allowed to do that and if something tries to tell them to stop a firing mechanism may go off in the brain don't do that let them do this you know and he's going to be mad he feels betrayed and also that the people the system it's not creating the utopia he was promised they're they're thinking they're going to eliminate human suffering guys they're going to say basically that brain hacking he's he's talked about hacking humans guys that people when these plagues are going to be going off and jesus told me i was one of the two witnesses in the dreams uh he literally told me uh january 21st 2000 january 28th 2021st i was in time elijah he whispered that to me i mean he told me i don't want to go into all that but but uh and basically uh see if i can remember this where i was going with this they're going to be able to tell all these miracles like I and the other guy, the other witness is doing. These are like extraterrestrials giving us this power to do this. These are bad aliens. They're hacking into people's brains, manipulating them, trying to put a uh, mindset in their system. You have to do this or you're going to get plagues on you. They're hacking into us. They're going to say if a person went into the darkness that day. Maybe they brought down a star or a comet and then they got in people's heads and did fear like a mind control or whatever to try to manipulate them to repent. They're hacking into us. They're trying to change us, you know, and whatever, you know, but they're going to say we are hacked and, and to protect ourselves so no God can get in our head or try to do this or manipulate us, our fears. We need to take this mark and we're going to be free. They don't believe in this guy, this false prophet doesn't believe in free will. He wants to try to change, re-engineer, which is, to, he doesn't call it re-engineer, because engineer means to create, but he wants to re-engineer, to go backwards, to, to take God's creation and tinker with it. And God told me they're going to remove particles. And so their particles in your brain also have to do with thought process. If you think something bad, or what they deem as bad, going to infringe on the rights of freedom. Like you think anything against a homosexual, 
homosexual or you want to call somebody out just to repent and tell them to repent, a firing mechanism will go off in your brain. You won't have free will as long as you think evil thoughts and killing and all this stuff. You'll have all the free will, but if you think anything good, it'll remove that. And this is why some people appeared to be more robotic than others because others people were left alone if they had those freedoms or whatever if they had that in place and they're going to make it look colorful at first they're not going to manipulate you at first a, a christian may take it voluntarily you know through uh because we're going to be going through three and a half years of the tribulation it's not going to be enforced on everybody until the end of that period and people were going to have to hide and jesus said he would he would protect them told me you know he come within about a week at that time you know less less than that told me just just a couple days last something something like that but anyways uh basically uh see where i was going with this they're going to try to enforce that but at first it's going to be voluntary and so the first when a person takes a mark they may be free to reject uh, what do you say F free to tell somebody repent but take it because that's a deception they they whatever's programmed on that chip they want it to do or they can adjust it on the computer as they go they can make it look more liberal like hey you're not a robot see like all these people look they, they look they look just as normal as you that's the deception and once you get enough people then you can start really tinkering and just adjust it you know and whatever's programmed in that chip you know and from what i can understand from what showing me there's going to be 12 laws on it you know there there are 10 kings and there are two kings that's a number of 12. jesus had 10 commandments or, or moses had 10 commandments and jesus added the other two so something to be 12 laws against whatever jesus taught and this guy doesn't believe in god but he's saying technology can make us gods guys so they are going to hack into the human brain and they are going to take that over they're going to any thought of God will be pushed out of their mind by that firing mechanism when, when you take that chip. You can't think any thought to pray up to God or fire up and you'll get your credits removed and they can really control people. If they don't do what they want, they just turn off the chip or they make it to where you can't get the access, you know, to whatever things you're getting. So it's a totally manipulated system. They wanted to teach people about the free market and everything. But the free market, he's he's talking about us being hacked, you know, potentially by humans or people being able to hack us. And it's because the devil's talking to, into his head. He knows there's going to be a tribulation when God's going to be putting plagues on people doing certain things. And they're, they're going to say they're hacking into you. They're controlling you because he talks about hacking right now in a way of like, you you don't have free will because you're manipulated by your environment. In other words, like they say, if you were grew up in a Muslim country, you'd be forced to be Muslim. If you grew up in a, a Christian country, you'd be forced to be Christian. But there, are many that argue this is a Christian country. I don't, but there are many here that don't, that aren't Christian. And so, you know, that doesn't doesn't work. But they say like you're forced. You know, the society they impress these things on you. You don't have free will. You know, they say that you don't have a choice. They, they try to manipulate you to make. And he says the most dangerous people are the people that think they have free will because they think no matter what comes in their mind, this is basically their choice when they can be manipulated. But <coughs> it works both ways, guys. The devil has you thinking, I would say the same thing. This guy actually thinks he's free. He wants to be free to... Uh, Take it up the butt basically from another man he thinks this is his free right his choice it's natural it's his choice you know but at the same time he wants to argue he doesn't have a choice yet nobody is making him turn to the lord jesus nobody's making him there are influences in society telling him to turn to god or in his case he's an israelite turn to the god of your fathers but he doesn't regard the God of his father. It's like the scripture says, you know, he doesn't regard any, any God. Nor does he desire women. He doesn't desire women. And basically, this, from what I'm, I'm gathering when I'm studying him, is all the inconsistencies in this kind of faith, guys. 
that they want to say you don't have free will as you are. You're being manipulated. They're, they're because you're being hacked because it's like people have your data and your uh, blood pressure and all this stuff. And so they're advertising things to you to try to get you into that. And that's true. The devil will tell, come with truth, but he speaks lies also. So you must not have any free will then, he tells you. Because if you don't believe you have any free will, you're going to be the most manipulated. But this guy has a different, he's been taught a different way. And so he believes, if you believe you have free will, you're more dangerous. He also believes individualism, kind of like what they tell us. Individualism is dangerous. Because you're thinking about yourself and not the other people around you. But let's switch this. Let's take a globalist scenario where it's the way we have right now as certain nations like what they call republic you know being independent of government and different things telling them what to do they, each nation has their own choice and you have globalism which is everybody wants to be for sin basically an abomination let's flip that upside down let's take it back to the time before people came out of the closet and i don't agree that this country was ever a christian nation because of the freemasonry and the uh occultism that was in it and our white house is built off of a pentagram and stuff but nonetheless to say let's just kind of do this scenario you could see what you could perceive to be christians and there were these closet homosexuals these christians could be considered the globalist model back then but they had a problem with that globalist model because they said well they don't care about me, the, the individual, as a homosexual. We're in minority. They don't care about us. You know, they're more about their whole global agenda, you know, because it seemed to be widespread. And so if it was the other way around, you know, and they were back like that, and let's say we had globalism all about Jesus and everything, then they would suddenly be preaching about individualism or identity. So it's not a problem about globalist or identity itself. It's who's on the side of those two parties. Who is on the side of those? You can't have globalism in this world, guys. It works in heaven. Everybody follows God, that globalist government of God. But when you put sinners into something, it's incredibly dangerous because you have a system that talks about the free market where everybody can do what... And the church, they call it grace. Outside of the church, they call it freedom. And here is the uh, commonality. This world's version of grace and this world's version of freedom outside of the church have this in common. They do not speak and specify what kind of grace it is. There's no, it just says we have freedom in general. It doesn't address the fact that did, well, does a rapist or a pedophile have freedom to do whatever he wants? If you, if you preach to people, you can do whatever you want. You're free to. And you know that there's pedophiles and rapists in that society and murderers. Are you overlooking that? I mean, how can you overlook that? Because if you don't say anything to them, they're going to hear in their minds, I'm free to do whatever I want. And they're going to do what they want, which is to steal, kill, and destroy, you know, and, and, and rape and do all that because you've not told them any specifics on what you're, you mean when you say freedom. And in the church, they do the same type thing. They say, we say grace, but we don't tell them. You don't have grace to go back and forth with Jesus. You don't have grace to uh, willfully sin. You can come back if you're still breathing, but there's no guarantee you can come back because Jesus says if a servant you know, he finds him doing the good things, you know, you know, he's waiting on his master, you know. He'll say to him, well done, good and faithful servant. He'll deliver the kingdom into his hand. But that evil servant says, my Lord's delaying his coming. In other words, I'm waiting for him. And he begins to, to eat and drink with the drunkards, to beat up the maidservant, the, the people that are telling him to repent of that. You can't be eating and drinking. And all that then the Lord of that servant will come on a day which he doesn't expect and will cut him asunder he said if he begins not if he does it for a while not if he does it for 20 30 minutes or a period of weeks and he doesn't come back to Jesus he just keeps doing that and, and he doesn't repent because this is the, the holiness in our holiness community we tend to uh, be down on the once saved always saved but we 
have an often hard time judging and here we say but we you know if if as long as as long as you're trying if you go back there to that then god will understand you know but it's the same deal jesus said if you begin to do that if you think like that so like every day guys my name means god is gracious and he did told me i was an end time elijah but I never feel in my mind, I can never tell myself, hey, Sean, you have grace to go back to that right now if you want to. Because I know if I think that in my time of weakness and in my time of temptation, I'm going to be, uh, that thought will ring in my mind. You can come back. You can come back. God will forgive you. Remember how many times you walked away before? And I do that. And then because I know Jesus said, if you begin to do that, you know, if he keeps seeing that pattern, if you begin to do that, he'll come in a time when you don't think will cut you asunder and it ultimately adds up to i fear the lord more than i than i uh trust in grace i love the grace of the lord and i trust in his favor but i don't believe in god's favor and deliberate willful sin god's favor he favors a person to come out of their sin that if they're willing to agree with them about it and lay it down fine but if they say but but I, i'm going to go back to that later when i'm weak this frustrates the lord because he knows, Jesus knows you're putting your salvation in jeopardy and he could lose you if he has to come back because he told me only the Father knows who's going to sin against him. And he told me, you know, he doesn't know when he's coming back. And so that means he wants you ready because if you sin against him, he can lose you and he cannot know you're going to be lost. Jesus doesn't know who's going to be lost and who's saved. He told me this. He said only the Father knows because he's incarnated into uh, flesh He's made like a human being and, and, and to be the example of what a prophet would be to the people. He wouldn't know. So he would tell them basically, don't play with it. I love you. I'm, you know, I welcome you back with open arms today as a prodigal son, but don't go back out there to that. That's the same way I'm thing I'm going to tell you to, to, uh, guys, you know, because Jesus uh, came for our example that we might know how to live like him, speak like him with, you know, you know speak like him to not want to not say anything that's going to cause anybody to go out but for the safety of people and oftentimes a, a critic a prophet is called to be a social critic one of the things me and the false prophet agree with this guy is uh that sometimes for a prophet you have to be a social critic of things we're just on different sides of the table you know he has his way you know and it's society and, and, and the Lord's house, you know, to be a, a critic of this, that we can't be playing around with what the grace of the Lord is, that he can, he's extremely merciful. He's extremely uh, gracious, but we need to make sure that we're taking precautions how we're using that grace because he doesn't promise our next breath. And we need to consider he's God and we need to have a biblical view of hell and when we do that and we have that mindset, that fear there, then we can in the holiness, not out of it, we can trust in the grace of the Lord that Jesus favors me in his way, in his book. I, I'm free right now that, that, you know, I've turned from my sins. I put those things behind me. I can look ahead to my future in the Lord. I don't have to carry that because I've sincerely with my whole heart, I've repented. I put it out of me. I can go forward in the Lord and I don't have to look back at that and I can be holy and I can concentrate on fruit and bearing the fruit of peace and love and self-control and faithfulness. I can concentrate on these things in the Lord and I can trust him. He's going to save me from those things and I can trust he's going to give me visions and he's going to give me spiritual experiences. All the things motivate me in him, all the goodness, all the riches of Christ. I can trust in these things. These things are good guys. Just don't let your grace be trusting that you have right or you have some kind of freedom to go back that you're going to be guaranteed no matter what that you can come back the next time. Because again, you don't know when your next breath is. And Jesus, uh, the Father, knows it. And he communicates to the Son, you know, you know this is his time. And, and Jesus communicates to the angels. And so he's not able to you know you're responsible for that guys jesus is like your lawyer your defender between now and then he he's trying to keep you on the straight and narrow because he doesn't know who's going to be lost or who's safe only the father knows he doesn't know who's going to sin against him and to give him 
moment, he said. He said, only the Father knows. Now, he can see things ahead of time, and the Father's shown him a greater eagle-eyed perspective than many of us have, and he's seen many things about the future that are secrets, but individuals who, who die and everything, he's not shown that because he's given the task of being like a great prophet, being like coming in our example how we should be, what kind of prophet we should be, or what kind of messenger, or what kind of follower of his father. You know, like he follows his father, he wants us to follow the father the same way. And, and my dad missed it because he was trying to, you know, he was a firefighter. He was trying to put out fires and stuff, you know, in his community, but he didn't put out his own fire, you know, like of racism and unforgiveness and things. And he probably, he may have thought he had time and maybe, I don't know if he thought maybe I can repent of this later, but I don't think, to be honest, that he even thought there was anything wrong with it. And so there's a real danger of hardening your heart, guys, when, when, God tells you over and over, you don't have grace in that. And you keep telling yourself you do. There will come a time when you don't even think that's wrong. You just believe in Jesus. Like he had that kind of Baptist maybe upbringing to just believe in Jesus. But he, Jesus told me in the dream when I asked him, did my dad make it? And he said, no. Uh, you know, he kind of uh, stuttered or didn't stutter, but, you know, kind of uh, cleared his throat or whatever. Like he was just tired of it, you know, that that so many of his people or so many the people in the world how they're training up the children in the church just this kind of easy believism and it's causing multitudes to go to hell and they're not judging the people in their own house they're judging people outside of the house like my dad was worried about people coming over here uh, from the border calling them wetbacks he was worried about that he was worried about my sister running wild and like maybe doing stuff that whatever for for uh, a, a girl or a woman or whatever but he didn't see the sin in his own life the racism and the unforgiveness you know and no real relationship with jesus no maybe right read a bible passage or two you know these are serious things guys we got to look at and that's a prophet's job you know he calls the people to action because you know he can see things because oftentimes if you listen to the prophet uh, I'm not saying bad prophets, but I'm, I'm just saying in general, it's going to make your life more fruitful, you know, like all of you, you have a suggestion, you know, praying the scripture or anything you've done, guys, that, that's in the Lord. It's not in vain. It's great. You know, a prophet's job is to edify the body and to call them uh, to action, to motivation, you know, and, and, and it, it will challenge them sometimes but a prophet is kind of a protector a watcher you know it says in the elijah codes about me you know i'll be a twin which i am and it says a watcher over the people the season of the watcher you know he watched over his people but he didn't smite and so maybe in these plagues i'm gonna have to you know god will show me about that later but i'm watching over the people guys i don't hate anybody in the church i just i don't want anybody to be playing around with any hellfire when when i know the dangers of it you know myself and, and you have to, sometimes the greatest teacher has to be first the greatest failure and i had to go through some hard tests guys but so you know if you want to be spared through those things follow jesus christ he's a perfect example guys follow him and, and listen to his sayings about you know go and sin no more and and uh you know about abiding in him and if you abide in him and his word abide in you you'll bear much fruit you just remain in his doctrine remain in his teaching you got to let it uh germinate and resonate in your mind cultivate those seeds of the word of god in your mind and your thought life and, and keep the other seeds out keep the cares of the world out keep your mind focus your attention on him and he's going to take care of you guys but I love you guys. I know that was a lot longer than I wanted to say, but uh, this uh, these end days are approaching very fast. And again, this guy Yuval Noah Harari, he's he looks just like the guy I saw. And Jesus is going to tell me more. But so far in the dream, when I asked about him, what I got the other day is something in him is going to die. He looks like this living conscience or whatever you wouldn't think you'd be capable of that kind of genocide or murder but jesus said something in him is going to die and i think if 
I was shown how people coming out of that outer darkness, many of them are going to be so angry at what happened to them. There's going to be this fire stirred up, this hatred is going to be birthed out of their heart. I talked about that at the Clown Spirit. The guy who wrote it, Stephen King, based it on a town of hate, guys. It's like the hate growing out of a person to become murderers. These people are going to be taken over by the beast by such hatred of what happened to them. And, and Jesus said in the last days, we're going to be hated of all nations. You know, and, and they're going to be angry at that plague of a God doing that. And me telling them, God did this to you. And you need to repent. And he will forgive you. But he had to show you how bad it was so you wouldn't stay there. He wants to uh, put pressure on you to give up your sinfulness. Because you only have three and a half years to do it or it's going to be too late for you. They're going to be angry at that. And something in him is going to die. If not there, then maybe he himself will take the mark. But something in uh, Yuval is going to die. So he's going to be on a more extreme level than he is now. And to want to exterminate Christians. It's going to get bad, guys. But I love you. That's all I have to say. Just take care of yourselves, guys. Read the scriptures. Don't worry. Jesus has... He promised me he will protect people. This guy... This this government's not going to get their hands on people to the last three and a half years. And we're going to go through three and a half years. And then we're going to have to hide at that time. And then they, they're going to capture many people in the church and put them to death. Who are not ready not walking the way they should they'll get the discipline and they'll die for their faith and they will be raised up after three days with me and the other witness i'll be i'll die in a different way i don't want to talk about that some other time but uh but uh but he will protect you guys if you'll just follow jesus he'll show you where to hide what to do at that time everything will be okay but you got, I'm telling you, you got to sow the word of God in your life. Because if you sow some bad seeds at that time, guys, it can get in your mind and the devil can kill you psychologically. I'm going to face such a death because of something. But but that'll be a story for another time, guys. Uh, I love you guys. I'm praying for you. Uh, don't worry. Trust in the Lord, guys. You know, read the Gospels. I love you guys. I'm praying for you. Until next time. Shalom.